Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, no, no. I'd love to see you tonight, Angel, but somebody took a shot at one of my clients, and he's afraid it may happen again. And you know, a thing like that can become pretty monotonous, so much so that my client could get bored to death. The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Friendly Target. And now, The Case of the Friendly Target. It's late evening in New York when a sedan pulls up to the head of an alley... And two men get out. All right, Mitch. All clear. Let's go. Yeah, Connie. It's dark in this alley. Never mind, Mitch. Don't use the flashlight yet. We'll find it. It's the first door. Ah, here we are. Where are you, Connie? I can't see. Right over here. Wait. Oh, yeah. Allison said it's a simple lock. Won't take a minute. I'll hold the light. Work fast so we won't have to have it on long. Okay. Can you see? Yeah, Connie. Now I... Hey, where'd the other light come There's from? There's a spot on us. It's a trap. All right, you fellas. Put up your hands and don't make any other move. We have you covered. What do we do? A trash barrel. Drop behind us. Okay. They get you, Mitch? No, I made it. Now what? No use, Connie. We've got both ends of the alley covered. Connie, they know your name. Yeah, it's a trap, all right. They were waiting for us. Where'd I get that out? We gotta get out of here first. Come on out, both of you, with your hands up. Oh, we're coming after you. We'll have to make a run for it. You're crazy, Connie. They're all around us with guns. And with the spot on us, they see us, and we can't see them. I'm not letting them take me. Come on. But Connie. Don't look, I tell you, run for the car. I have to go right through their fire. It's our only chance. I'll never make it. Okay, take your choice. Their guns or mine. What? That's my gun in your back. When I count three, you start running or I pull the trigger. Oh, Connie, no. We've got 30 seconds, Connie. Call out your guns and come out reaching or we start firing. That'll be all we need. You going, Mitch? No, no, Connie, I can't. One. You go, Connie. Leave me here. No sure hit one of us alone. Our only chance is to run at the same time. Give him a split target. I can't, Connie. Please. Oh. 15 seconds, Connie. Three. Don't shoot, Connie. I'm going. Just me, Allison. Sorry to wake you up. Connie. Yeah. You ought to sleep with your windows open, Allison. The fresh air's good for you. What, what do you want? 
Why didn't you come to the door? Windows offer less resistance. I want it in with no arguments. I don't get it. Did something go wrong? Did something go wrong, you stooly? Stooly? What happened? Did they get the alarm fixed? We never had time to find out. They were waiting for us. Stay. The law. As if you didn't know. I didn't. No, I said, don't, don't. Let go. You're going to pay for this, don't. Allison. You're going to pay fast because your pals and cops are going to figure me to come here. But I couldn't run off without saying goodbye. No, no, you got it wrong, Connie. Believe me. It's no use, Allison. You were the one who steered me into the trap. I didn't know it was a trap, honest. Not much. I didn't. I don't have time to argue. Just let me explain. Let me explain. I got the dope from you. And I got it from somebody else. This is a stoolie. It's, it, it's him, not me. Sure. That's the honest truth, so help me. I thought he was on the level. I didn't know about it. All right, you got it from somebody else. Who else? What are you going to do to him? Who else? Oh, oh. If I tell you, will you lay off me? The pants. Now, who is it? Before I... I... Don't. I'll talk. I'm listening. It's, it's Wagner. Frank Wagner. Yeah. Why didn't you tell me about this when you laid out the job? Wagner's been going straight. They didn't want nobody to know he was selling information. At least, that's what he told me. If this is just a stall, Alice. No, it isn't. It isn't. Get hold of Wagner. Make him talk. You'll find out. Sure, Allison. I intend to. Hello. Hello, operator. This is Mrs. Frank Wagner. I want an ambulance right away. And the police. What? Yes. Wagner. W-A-G-N-E-R. In the Horton Apartments. Hurry, please. My husband's just been shot. Wagner, I'm Mike Waring. Oh, yes, Mr. Waring, come in. Thanks. My husband asked me to send for you. He wants to see you. He was injured in a shooting about a month ago. You may have read about it. Yeah, I remember. Where is he? Right down this hall. He's still in bed. According to the paper, he had a close call. Yes, he certainly did. The bullet just missed his heart. For a while, the doctors didn't hold out much hope. Here we are. Frank, here's Mike Waring. Oh, yes. Come in, Waring. Come in. Hello, Wagner. So you're the falcon, eh? Does it show? Tell me you're quite the detective, Wagner. And if they didn't, I'd get a new publicity agent. I want you to find out who shot me. Well, don't you know? No. Don't you have any enemies? Can't think of any. I'm a very likable character. <laughs> How does it happen? Middle of the night. I'm in bed, see? Doorbell rings. I open the door. Bang, like that. I'm in the hospital with a hole in my chest. Then you were face to face with the person who fired the shot. He had a flashlight, shined it in my face. I couldn't see a thing. That ain't. Yes, Frank. Where's Miss Willis? What do you want? I'll get it. Where's Miss Willis? I let her go. You were worried about the expense. Yes, but I'm going to need a lot of nursing. I don't want I can help. handle it. Now, what do you want? Glass of water. All right. I'll be right there. Good kid, that wearing. Hate to do this to her, but still so doggone weak, I can't move out of this bed. Now, uh, what were we talking about? The shooting. Oh, yes. I didn't see who did it. Well, you're not giving me much to go on. All right. I'll give you something. There's a fellow named Artie Allison. I think he knows who did the shooting. What makes you think that? He called me in the hospital. The way he talked, I got the idea he knows something. But wants cash to spill it. All right, I'll get to Allison see what he knows. Only one trouble. Price too high? No. We didn't get around to talking terms. Well? I sent the wife around to see Allison. He's disappeared. Oh, great. But you'll find Allison, and it's ten to one you'll get to the boy we're looking for. Okay, I'll go to work on it. Do that, Waring. And hurry, will you? Last time, he missed me by a fraction of an inch. Could be next time he'll hit dead center. The Adventures of the Falcon. It's half a day since Mike Waring went to work for Frank Wagner. Now in a small restaurant near General Square in Jersey City, 
Mike slips into a booth and smiles at the nervous little man sitting across the table from him. Hello, Allison. Hello. Who are you? Mike Waring. Oh. How'd you know my name? I have your picture. I've been looking for you. How'd you find me? Very simple, Allison. You're not as lost as you think you are. Besides, I have my sources of information. What do you want with me? Just to find out if you're as good at answering questions as you are at asking them. What questions? Well, number one, what do you know about the Wagner shooting? Who says I know anything? Wagner. Oh. What's he say about me? He said you have information about the shooting for sale. He's lying. Why should he? All right. It's true, Wary. I do have information. Well, what do I do? Sit here while you argue it out with yourself? I know who tried to kill Wagner. Good. What'll it cost me? Are you working for Wagner? Uh-huh. I don't get it. What? Just what Wagner's after. To keep on living. He says I can tell you who shot at him. Is that it? Uh-huh. And you say the same thing, so I'm waiting. Are you sure you're working for Wagner, Waring? Why not? How can I be sure? Uh, there's a phone called Wagner. All right, all right. You're working for Wagner. But where's your daughter, Allison? Nothing. I'll tell you who shot him. For free? For free. I want to get out of this. Okay, here's your chance to start getting. Who did the shooting? Ted Connie. Connie, huh? Why? Well, Connie got the idea Wagner put the law on him. Where did he get that idea? I don't know. He accused me. When I convinced him it wasn't me, he said then it must be Wagner. That's all I know about. I see. That's why I ran out. When I heard Wagner was shot, I was sure Connie did it. Connie knew I was sure. So he might try to shut me up. All right, Allison, let's go. Go? Where? Home. But if Connie comes... I found you here. What makes you think Connie won't? Hey, that's a thought. Yeah, but I don't think you have to worry about him anyway, Allison. So you can go home. Connie's in enough trouble. Wouldn't be very smart of him to go looking for more. That's right, Waring. But what do I do if it turns out Connie isn't very smart? <laughs> You found Allison. That was quick, Larry. Oh, not much to it, Wagner. And I checked with missing persons. They referred me to the robbery division. You mean the police knew very well? Yeah, it seems he's been a stoolie for them. They used him on Carney, so when Carney escaped, they figured he might go gunning for Allison. They sent a man to cover Allison, and he followed them to Jersey City. And Allison never knew. Well, I didn't see any reason to tell him. But they knew where to find him if they wanted him. Mm-hmm. And uh, now? Now he's home again. Suppose he skips out again. No, I got a man watching his place this time. We may need him to clinch things against Carney. If we find Carney. Wonder where they got the idea I tipped him to the police. Hmm. From Allison, no doubt. Did you say Allison? Allison's a liar. I'm willing to bet he steered Carney to you. Who in turn came gunning for me. Could be. So now all we need is to find Carney. <laughs> That's what I like about working for you, Wagner. Just one goose chase after another. Well, where are they? What's better for chasing geese than a falcon? Oh, Mrs. Wagner, come in. Thank you. Uh, so you left your patient alone. Huh? He'll be all right till I get back. If he needs anything, there's a phone right by the bed. Well, what can I do for you? I wanted to talk to you without Frank knowing. What about? Well, now that the nurse is gone, there's no one at our place except Frank and me. And he's completely helpless. He tried to walk today, but he only took two steps and fell. Mm-hmm. Well, suppose Connie comes back and tries to shoot Frank again. What could I do? I, I, I think that we ought to have a man around the place. Don't you? At least at night. Might be a good idea. I didn't say anything to Frank. I didn't want to worry him. Well, I'll see if I can get you someone. Someone? But I... What's the matter? Well, nothing. It's just that, well, you're already in the case, and you do have a guest room, and... I see. Tell me something, Mrs. Wagner. Why don't you call me Patty now that we know each other? Do we? Well, don't we? I feel as if I'd known you all my life. I feel as though I've known you all of 20 minutes. Well, if you come to our place, you'll get a chance to know me better. That, I believe. You don't like me, do you? Did I say that? You think I'm a heel because Frank's laid up? He told me you're a good gal. Don't take him too seriously, Mike. He talks for effect, too. Will you come? To protect Frank? Well, of 
Connie might come back. You sure it's Connie? Well, I thought that was settled. Uh, no, not quite. There are a couple of things. What can you tell me about the shooting? Can you add anything to what your husband told me? I'm afraid not. I wasn't home that night. Oh? You're trying to suggest something. No, no. Oh, uh, excuse me, Patty. Hello? Murray? This is Frank Wagner. Oh, yes, Wagner. What is it? Frank, what does he want? Allison just phoned Murray. He wanted you. Says he's contacting Connie. Knows where you can find him. Where? He wouldn't say over the phone. I think he wants cash. Mm, starting that routine again. Hmm? All right, Wagner, I'll go right over. So long. What is it? We're going to visit Allison. We? Oui, I have to get back to Frank. He's alone. Maybe he's better off that way. Why do you say that? Never mind. But if we're going to get to know each other, we might as well start by sticking together now. <laughs> Walk so fast? Something's going on that I don't like. Here we are. I had a man stationed across the street to see that Allison didn't leave, but he wasn't there when we came in. What does that mean? It could mean that Allison has left and my man's tailing him. But then why would Allison send for us? Shh. I hear somebody. Maybe we'll find out. Oh, you wearing? So you're not tailing him. I thought I asked you to stay across the street, Lippet, unless Allison went out. He's out. Then what are you doing here? Why aren't you tailing him? This is where he's out. For keeps. What? I heard a shot. I came up to investigate. Somebody must have come in the back way. Allison's dead. You want to look for yourself? It's after dark already. I didn't intend to be gone this long. I hope Frank's all right. Do you? Believe it or not, Mike, I don't want anything to happen to him. Then I'd really feel guilty. <laughs> and stop smiling. Was I smiling? Well, after all, I'm the one who called the ambulance when Frank was shot. I saved his life. Don't forget that. You called the ambulance? Yes. Thought you weren't home that night. I got home a little after the shooting and found Frank on the floor. Oh, I see. Besides, if I meant any harm to Frank now, would I ask you to come along to protect him? Is that why you asked me? One of the reasons. Of course, I do have others. Yes, so I've noticed. I think we'd get along, Mike, once you get over your silly suspicions. And once you get the idea that all I'm going along for is to protect Frank. All right. Now, only one thing bothers me, Angel. What's that? Who's going to protect me? Hey, you'll have to forgive me, Wagner. I make a habit of coming through windows. Eccentricity of mine. Connie. Yeah, Connie. I've been holed up long enough. I figure it's time for me to blow. So I thought I'd better settle with you and Allison first. Too bad you're here all alone, isn't it? I never thought you'd be crazy enough to come here, Connie. Nobody did. That's how come I'm here. Barking up the wrong tree, pal. I had nothing to do with your brush with the law. Allison says different. Is Allison your idea of the soul of honesty? No, Wagner, but neither are you. You've got no call to suspect me except Allison says If so. you can prove he was lying... How am I going to do that? That's your problem. Get Allison. Bring him here, face to face. I've had enough of that kind of story, Wagner. I don't know what to say. So don't say anything. I'll settle with you just like I was sure. That draw, what can I lose but your life? Oh, Connie, wait. I've waited long and... Hey, somebody's coming. Must be Patty. This gun says you don't make a sound, Wagner. I'm home, Frank. Everything all right? Answer it. Tell her it is. Go ahead. Yes, Patty. Everything's all right. Good. We'll be right in. Wait. Oui. She's got somebody with her. Sounds like Come it. Come on, Mike. Yeah. We'll have to cover both of them. Remember, you not a sound. I thought Mike wearing Frank, I thought it'd be a good idea. Hold it, both of you. Oh. Yeah, life's just full of little surprises. Get over next to Wagner's bed, you. Don't do it, Waring. He can't watch us both from where he is. Shut up, Wagner. Waring, now's your chance. Yeah. Hey! Oh! It's all right, Patty. Shot went into the wall. He's getting away! Now we'll see. He's going down the fire escape. I can't follow because he's got a clear shot at me in the window. Patty, only the door. Turn off the light. All right, Mike. That's better. Can you see him? Yeah, now the odds are my way. All right, mister, that's far enough. I've got a gun on you, so don't take another step. That's to show I'm not fooling. But stand still. The next won't be a warning. All right, don't shoot again. And drop your gun. Go ahead. Okay. You drop it? I dropped something. I heard it. I don't know if it was the gun. It's too dark down there, but I'll go see. What if he's bluffing? Then I'll call it. If he shoots me, we'll know he wasn't bluffing. Oh, see you later, Patty. I hope...
Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. It's half a minute since Mike Waring ordered Ted Carney to surrender, and Carney went through the motions of obeying. Now Mike approaches Carney on the fire escape, hoping that Carney can neither fire nor escape. That's it, fella. Just stay that way until I pick this up. Wagner called you Waring. You must be the Falcon. Yeah, you must be Ted Carney. I've been looking for you. I understand you're a smart cookie, Waring. So? Maybe you'd be interested in a proposition. No, I don't sell out, Carney. So you're not smart. It depends on the point of view. I could make it worth your while. No, no dice. I don't need that kind of money. There's nothing I can say. You can't think of a thing. You'll be sorry about this, Waring. Maybe, Carney. But not half as sorry as you. Let's go. I'll hold them till you get here. Right, so long. Well, Carney, the police are on their way. I heard you ask for Sergeant Corbett a homicide. I didn't kill anybody. You tried to kill me. That's a lie, Wagner. And you did kill Alice. I didn't. Has Allison been killed? Yes, Wagner, he has. Well, I didn't do it. Tell me something, Carney. What? Why did you come here? I don't have to answer to you. All right, Wagner will. How about it, Wagner? It's just as you guessed, Wally. He said Allison told him that I was the one who put the law on so he came to finish up what he started before. I didn't shoot you before. But you were going to shoot him this time. I was going to make him talk. What did you do from the moment you entered this room? Nothing. I was only here a minute when you came. All right, in that minute. Nothing. Wagner, he threatened me. All right, now let's have it from the beginning. From when he entered. But I'm lying here reading and I hear a crash. I look around. He's coming through the window. He has a gun. He tells me he's been holed up long enough. He's getting out now. But first he's settling with Allison and me. Oh, with Allison and you. That's what he said. I didn't get around to Allison. I came here first. But you said you were settling with Allison. Look, Waring, you got me. They're going to throw the book at me, but I didn't shoot Allison. They're not getting me for that. Oh, we'll see, Connie. Wagner, get up. What? Get up. Walk across the room. I can't. Just from the bed to the door and back. What's the idea? I want to see how strong you are. I can't walk at all without help. I'm too weak. Uh, can you crawl? I don't know. Maybe. What are you trying to prove? Maybe you're stronger than you pretend. Why should he pretend? Makes a good alibi. Hey, that's an idea. Maybe he killed Allison on account of Allison sick me on him. You're crazy. You think he crawled all the way to Allison? This is ridiculous. I haven't set foot out of this bed alone in weeks. Call him on a wary. Make him get up. Make him walk. Maybe I will, Connie. Provided you explain one thing. What's that? How come you knew Allison was shot? Huh? Well, you said... I said he was killed. I didn't say how. Oh. That's right, Larry. Well, I, uh, I just figured it was part of the same deal. Wagner was shot, so I figured if it was the same person both times, uh, Allison would be shot, too. Except you accused me. I didn't shoot myself. I didn't think about you doing it until what Waring said about maybe you could walk. That's pretty flimsy, Connie. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Wagner. I'll accept that explanation. But Waring... Yes, it's plausible enough. So that leaves you, Wagner. I promised Connie if he could explain, I'd ask you to walk. Now, go ahead, walk. I can't. All right, I won't argue about it. As long as you can walk into the courtroom. Are you serious about this, Mike? You don't really think that Frank... Killed Allison? Sure. You know, Wagner, you told me you're a friendly guy. If I have an idea, you're going to lose your popularity awfully sudden. After all, you can't shoot your friends and have them, too. believe it, Mike. Why? You were already fed up with Frank. But I never thought he'd kill anyone. Well, that's where Allison knew him better than you did. You see, in order to get off the spot with Connie, Allison blamed Frank for tipping the police to Connie. But Allison knew as soon as Frank heard about it, he'd try to get even. So Allison tried to kill him to protect himself. But he only wounded him instead. Mm -hmm. And Frank wanted revenge, so he hired me to find Allison for him. He knew Allison did the shooting, but he pretended not to know because he wanted to blame Connie. So you could frame him for the murder. Well, what put you on the right track? I was suspicious when Frank said Allison called him wanting to talk to me. He could have called me direct. Maybe Allison thought you were at our place. Yes, but when I wasn't, why didn't Allison call me direct? All right, that made you suspicious. But you certainly must have had something more than that to make you accuse Frank. Oh, I did. His lying about not being able to walk finished it. How did you know he was lying? Well, he said he couldn't walk at all, not even from his bed to the door. Well? Well, it was light when you left him. When you returned, it was dark. But Frank had been reading. 
light was on in the room and the light switch was by the door. I remembered because you turned the lights out of the door when I was chasing Carney. Right, so Frank could walk. Uh-huh. Well, that's all there is to it, Patty. Uh-huh. And now that Frank's in jail for murder, maybe you won't be so standoffish as far as I'm concerned. After all, I'm sure you'd like me once you got to know me better. Yeah, could be. But I've always heard that what you don't know won't hurt you. So, Angel, I'm afraid part of my education will have to remain sadly neglected. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Grace. Well, I'm glad you called. I'll have to cancel out tonight, Angel. I'm all jammed up. Mm-hmm. Some girl I know just brought me a very unusual proposition, and I'll be hanged if I touch it. The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now, join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Talented Twin. And now, The Case of the Talented Twin. It's late evening in New York, and the yellow convertible tears down Riverside Drive. At the wheel is George Alexander, who operates the car as though he owned the streets. Yeah, Mr. Alexander is a big operator. And the blonde alongside of him knows it. You warm enough, Masha? Oh, I'm fine, Mr. Alexander. My friends call me George. Now, why don't... Oh, you passed it. Huh? You should have turned right on 76. What for? Well, that's where I live. Oh, I'm not taking you home, Masha. Now, really, Mr. Alexander... George. The only reason I consented to go with you was because Mr. Kemp introduced us. You like singing at Mr. Kemp's club? Yes, of course. What's that got to do with it? It's got everything to do with sweethearts. I own the joint. Oh. Sure. Whose idea do you think it is for Kemp to give you a job in the first place? Uh, I didn't know. Well, any time you don't know something, Masha, you just ask George. He's got all the answers. Well, if you don't mind, Mr. George... I'd like to go home. Really, I've got a splitting headache. That's okay. I have my boy fix you up something at my place. Why don't you sit a little closer? I'm perfectly comfortable over here. Nah, it's oh, too far away. Please, Mr. Alexander, you better look where you're going. <laughs> Come on, Masha, be sociable. What, do you want to sit there all look by... Look out! Huh? You're going to hit that man! Ah! Shut up! You're not going to leave him lying there. Why not? He may be dead. And we can't do him any good. Let me out. Get your hand off that door, Marsha. I'll let you go when I'm good and ready. And I'm not ready yet. Yes? I'm looking for Michael Waring. Well, you've come to the right place. Are you the one they call the Falcon? When they can't think of anything worse. Come on in, Miss... Uh... Uh, Davis. Ruth Davis. Sit down. Thanks. Now, what can I do for you? I'm not quite sure. Did you happen to notice an item in this morning's paper about a man being killed in a hit-and-run accident last night? Yes? That man was my father. Oh, I'm sorry. I want you to find the driver of that car. Why? Well, isn't that obvious? That man murdered my dad. He murdered him just as surely as if he used a gun. I don't care what it costs. Well, you should, Angel. I'd be lying if I didn't tell you that anything you invest in a case like this would be money thrown down the sewer. As I recall, the police don't have a single lead. Oh, yes, they do. Th there was a man named Arthur Crane who witnessed the accident. He might know more than he's told them. What makes you think so? Call it a woman's intuition. You know, that's greatly overrated. And... Maybe, but there's no harm in trying. Mm -hmm. What did you say this witness's name was again? Arthur Crane. Arthur... All right, Angel, I'll do what I can. Uh, 
Uh, here it is, Artie. Uh, Alexander George Real Estate, 1792 Belmore. It's uh, Elwood 06742. wonder if that's the right Alexander. Well, it has to be. Didn't the license bureau tell you that was the name of the party who owned the car? Yep. Well, it's the only George Alexander in the book. All right, hand me the phone. Yeah. What's that number again? Uh, Elwood 06742. See who that is, man. You expecting anyone? Nope. Too early for Jack to drop around. Just a second. Yeah. You want the crane? No. Well, is he in? Who is it, Pete? Uh, it's some guy who wants to see you. How do you do, Mr. Crane? How do you do? My name is Mike Waring. I'm a private detective. Private detective? Yeah, at the moment, I'm working for Ruth Davis. Who? Ruth Davis. She's the daughter of the man who was killed last night in that hit-and-run accident. Oh, oh, well, sit down, won't you? Pete. Thanks. See if we got any beer on ice. Yeah. Uh, don't bother, Mr. Uh, uh, Jordan. Pete Jordan, and it's no bother at all. Yeah, go on, Pete. Now, uh, what can I do for you, Waring? Well, according to the police blotter, you were the one who discovered Davis's body after the accident. That's right. I was coming home from a club date. Club date? Mm-hmm. I'm a musician. Oh. I play piano with a small combo around town. Mm -hmm. Well, go on. Well, just as I got out of the subway, I saw this guy Davis laying in the gutter. What time was that? Oh, it must have been around, uh, quarter past three. First, I thought it was just some stew bum, you know. Mm -hmm. Until I saw that briefcase under his arm, then I realized it must have been an accident. Well, you couldn't have gotten there much after it happened. That's what the cops told me. You didn't notice any sign of a car around? Nope. Well, there couldn't have been too many cars out of that arm. This is very important to my client. Look, Waring, if there was any way I could possibly help you, I'd be glad to. Any driver who pulls a stunt like that ought to get it in the neck. Yeah, sure, but uh, you can't tell me any more than you have, huh? Not a thing. I'm sorry. I wish I could. Well, here's your beer, gents. I'm afraid I'll have to ask for a rain check, Jordan. You're going already? Yeah, I got to. But uh, I'll leave my card. If you think of anything... Just leave it to me, Waring. If I think of anything, I'll know what to do. Yeah? Is Mr. George Alexander around? Who wants to know? My name is Artie Crane, but... Uh... I don't think it'll mean much to him. Just say I'd like to talk to him about a yellow Buick convertible. You what? Tell him I admire his taste in cars. You're nuts. Mr. Alexander doesn't own any convertible. That's not what the license bureau told me. Uh, maybe you better come in, Buster. Yeah, maybe I better. Sit down. I'll get Alexander. Hey, that's a nifty-looking piano he's got there. Mind if I try it? Just so you don't break it. Those gimme, gimme blues. It's a very original title. I'm a very original guy, Mr. Alexander. How so? Well, 99 guys out of 100 who know what I know would have spilled everything to the cops. But not you, huh? Mm-mm. Little Artie knows when to keep his mouth shut. For instance... Keep out of this, Vince. Go on, Crane. Well, for instance, last night I was coming home late and I saw a car bowl over some character who was crossing the street. Fortunately, I had enough presence of mind to copy down the license number. And you think this car belongs to me? Mm-hmm. You're wrong. Okay. I'm perfectly willing to leave it to Mike Waring. The Falcon? That's right. He's working for the daughter of the poor slob who got hit. He was around to see me this afternoon, wanted to know if I could help him. And you told him? Not a thing. I thought I could help you more. How much, Mosworth? Why, you dirty little... Let, let go. Should I throw him out, George? calm yourself, Vince. Don't be so free with your hands, You Mr. shouldn't blame... Vince never liked back. Ah, well, that little pushing around is going to cost you another five, Alexander. Why, take it easy, Vince. You'd think the money was coming out of your pocket. So now you want $15,000, eh, Artie? Otherwise, I go straight to Waring's and from there to the cops. Well, I wouldn't want you to make such a trip on my account. Then you better get it up. Okay, Artie. You leave it to me. I'll take care of you. And when I get through, I bet you don't complain. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. 
two hours have passed since Artie Crane made his little call on Mr. Alexander. Now we find Mike making a call of his own. Only his isn't nearly as successful. So when you come right down to it, Mr. Waring, you've made no progress at all. Well, I could give you a big song and dance, Ruth. No, thanks. I'm in no mood for entertainment. You see, the truth of the matter is I'm stymied. The only potential witness we had was this musician, Artie Crane. And he couldn't tell you anything? No, not a single solitary... Th oh, wait a minute. What's the matter? That briefcase your father was carrying... That won't help you. They found it clear across the street where it was knocked by the car. Well, if it was knocked there by the... Say that again. This Artie Crane character told me he realized that it wasn't some drunk sleeping it off when he noticed the briefcase under your father's arm. Well, what's wrong with that? Hey, you just said it, Angel. The car sent that briefcase flying. If Crane saw it under your father's arm, it could only have been while your father was alive. Then Crane was lying. That he was. Well, you think... I think I ought to have another little talk with that boy. Oh. Let's see if we can get him up here. He, he won't suspect anything? Not if it's put to him the right way. What are you telling me? Now, don't you worry, Ruth. I'll add lib something. Hello? Uh, hello, I'd like to speak to Artie Crane, please. Who wants him? Mike Waring. Well, Artie isn't here. Is this Pete Jordan? No, Pete isn't here either. Well, where is everybody? Unless there's been a change in plans, you might try the morgue. Hello, you still there, mister? Yeah, I'm just waiting for the top right. Hey, wait a minute. Is this Sergeant Corbett? Sure is, Mike. All right, Corbett. Give it to me gently. Who did what to whom? Well, whom is your friend Artie Crane? The what was a half dozen slugs through his head. As far as the who is concerned, we got no idea. Have you, Mr. Waring? <laughs> Hello, Pete. Oh, hiya, Mr. Waring. Well, I'd drop around and redeem that rain check. Rain check? I asked for one the last time I was here. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess you heard about Artie. Mm-hmm. That his piano? Yeah. To think he'll never touch it again. Mm. Just how good was he on it? Oh, you can have the Duke and Count Basie. I'd have taken Artie any time. You a musician, too? Yeah, but I wasn't in his class. I... I I used to sing a little. Oh. Well, how about an audition? What do you mean? Well, you never can tell, Pete. I may want to sponsor you. So let's hear how well you do in the voice department. Who killed Artie? Now, look, you can't talk to me like that. Come on, pigeon, sing. I <laughs> did. Ouch. You wouldn't try that. Your big brother was around. Let me go. Not before we have a solo. Now, who killed Artie? How should I know? You should if anyone would. Who had it in for him? No one. Everybody liked him. Uh -huh. So one of his admirers pumped six slugs into his face so even his own mother wouldn't recognize him. Incidentally, how did you? There wasn't a thing on the body. Well, I, I found him here. Might have been a visitor from Mars. Yeah, but he had a, a flag tattooed on his shoulder. A patriot, no less. Who was the hit-and-run driver who killed Davis? I don't know what you mean. Yes, you do, Pete. Artie must have told you everything. He saw the car that killed Davis. No, no, he didn't. You know, you won't look so good singing without those dazzling white teeth. <laughs> well... A fellow named Alexander. Does this fellow have a first name? George. George? You mean Arthur tried to shake down George Alexander? You know him? Well enough to realize that Artie made a serious mistake trying it. Let's hope we all profit by his example. <laughs> That's you, Vince? Yeah. How you make out? Just look. All right, beautiful. Inside. Stop that. Inside. Hello, Marsha. You're not going to get away with this, Mr. Alexander. I told you my friends called me George. You want to be my friend, huh? No. You're fooling. Sit down, baby. You can't keep me here. You can't keep me here. You can't do this. You can't do that. Why don't you give that tongue a rest? All right, that's enough. <laughs> Marsha and me, we understand each other. Well, don't we, sweethearts? What do you want? I just want to make sure you didn't tell anybody about our little ride let. Get it, Vince. What about Marsha? What's the matter? Can a gentleman invite a lady up to his apartment? After all, we got you for a chaperone. All right, all right. Hold your horses, will you? Hello, is George here? Oh, I see he is. Wait a minute, Buster. Not so fast. It's okay, Vince. This is the fork and he's an old friend of mine. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. I... Oh, I... Beg your pardon, am I interrupting something? No. 
Marsha, meet my way. How do you do? Well, generally I do all right, but I see George does even better. <laughs> Cute kid, eh? Yes, indeedy. Well, if you gentlemen are through discussing me, I'll say good night. Hold it, sister. Hmm. He's got a hypnotized. Vince, just thought maybe I want to tell us something. It's okay, Marsha. I'll give you a call later. All right, George. <laughs> <laughs> you wish you were in my shoes, eh, Mike? Hardly, George. I wouldn't care to face a murder rap. I'm afraid I don't understand you, Wary. Well, it stems from the manslaughter charge. Manslaughter? Mm-hmm. For killing Ralph Davis with your car last night. You know, Mr. D.A. could tell this story very effectively. It's got a wonderful moral, how one crime leads to another. Now, the opening scene would show you driving along. Get out. But... Well, you might let me finish, George. It's got great dramatic possibilities. You heard him. Get out. Who's this, little Sir Echo? If you're not out of here by the time I count through... You mean you're not interested in how my little script ends? No. And you keep up like this, Mike, and you won't be around for the end. It's all very interesting, Mr. Waring, but what happened after that? That's all there was, Ruth. You mean you know who killed my father and you let him go? I mean he let me go. He bought you off. No, no, no. Wait a minute, oh, Angel. I'm sure I was a fool not to see it before. But we'll see what the police think uh, about... sit down. Oh. You listen to me, Ruth. I walked out on Alexander because there wasn't a thing I could do. You know he ran over my father. Yeah, sure I do, but where's our evidence? There isn't any way I could tie it to him. The only witness was murdered. Well... Well, what? You know he murdered Arthur Crane. Can you prove that? Well, it stands to reason... Look, Angel, you can build as good a case against several other people. <sighs> Who, for example? Well, for example, you. What? Sure. You knew Artie Crane could identify the man who killed your father. And when he refused to give you any information, you murdered him. That's the most ridiculous piece of... Yes? Mr. Waring? That's right. My name's Marsha West. I don't know if you remember me. Oh, you underestimate your charms, Marsha. You're the kind of a girl my kind of man could never forget. Well, I'd like to talk to you. Well, what would be the point? I thought you were a close friend of Alexander's. Well, I was in his car last night. You what? Yes, he was taking me home when he killed that man. Where are you now? At the place where I work. It's called the TikTok Club. When can I expect you? Just open your door, Angel. I'm practically there now. Come on, you creep. Snap into it. We haven't got all night. The show goes on in a few... Yeah, what do you want, mister? Where's Marshall West's dressing room? The first one on your left. This one here? Yeah, that's right. I don't keep her too long. She's on in 10 minutes. Come on, girls. Don't stand up. Marsha? Marsha? She ain't here, Waring. What? No, just stay like you are, boys. Lock the door, Vince. All right. Where is she, George? Where is Sue? Marsha. She called me from here not more than 15 minutes ago. You say her, Vince? Was it uh, that old hag with the mop? Well, you boys ought to try television. That's a great act you've got there. Well, I'm glad you like it. What did Marsha tell you on the phone? Who? Don't be smart. And I just wanted to show you that two could play that game. What'd you tell him? Enough. You know, I wouldn't need much excuse to paste you one right now, Buster, so don't tempt me. What do you say, Mike? I say you boys aren't very smart. There are a dozen people out there. And they all work for me. So start talking, pal. Oh. Why, you... Chip, chum. Now, why you want to knock him down for Vince? <laughs> you only got to pick him up again. That's all right, Alex. I'm in very good shape. I can keep this up all night. <laughs> well, sleeping beauty, I didn't even have to kiss you to wake you up, huh? Yeah, this isn't the Prince's Palace. It's Bellevue Hospital. Uh, no kidding. Okay, Mike, who slugged you? First, I want to know where you found me, Sergeant. On West 8th Street. Well, how did I get down there? I can tell you one thing. I don't think you made it on foot. Uh, someone must have given me a lift. Oh? A character named Vince, working at the behest of George Alexander. What do they want to do that for? Because Alexander was the one who drove the car that killed Ralph Davis last night. Last night? Well, isn't it Sunday? Where have you been? Don't bother answering, I know. All right, all right. What day is it? Monday. Mon... Holy smoke. Where's Marsha? Who? Marsha West. She was in the car when Alexander killed Davis. Did she tell you that? 
Yes, and I wouldn't be surprised if she knew all about the Artie Crane killing, too. Is that tied up with this? Definitely. You see, Crane tried to blackmail Alexander, and Not he... Not so fast. Can you prove that? No, I can't hear, Corbett. So let's go where I can. Back to the adventures of the Falcon. A half hour has passed since Mike Waring set out with Sergeant Corbett to try to tie the case together. Their destination, the apartment of George Alexander. You're a pretty sick man, Waring. You don't know what you're saying. No, it's no use, George. We've got all the evidence we need. Right, Sergeant? Right. So why don't I hear from the district attorney? You will, shortly. You're still bluffing, Mike. Admit it. All right, then how do I know you paid off to Artie Crane? You know? Yes, and I can prove it. How about that, Mr. Alexander? Well, you see, it's like this, Sergeant. It was no shakedown. I gave Artie the money. Oh, because you were impressed by his musical talents and wanted to see him further his career? Why, Mike, you take the words right out of my mouth. Oh, no. Something wrong? You don't think the DA will buy that? Why not? If it's okay for me to help young ladies interested in musical careers, why not young men? Sounds logical. Oh, come on, Corbett, be smart. You don't believe that? I didn't say it did. I just said it sounded logical. That's all I ask. Where's Vince? What? I want to talk to him. You're going to have a long wait. Vince leaves town Friday night. Friday? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I suppose that was his double who bounced me around backstage at the TikTok club on Saturday. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, sure. Next, you'll say you never heard of a girl named Marsha West. Of course I have. Oh, sweetheart. Call me, George. Marsha. Is this the girl you mean? All right, never mind the act, George. Listen, Marsha, this is Sergeant Corbett. I want you to tell him everything. Everything? Yes, beginning with your call to me on Saturday night. My call to you? Don't you remember? I don't see how I could be expected to, Mr. Waring, seeing this is the first time we've met. What? But it's been a real pleasure. Let's do it again sometime. <laughs> You know, Mike, maybe we ought to go back to the hospital. It's not a bad place. They got a couple of good-looking nurses there. Okay, okay, so I'm nuts, Sergeant. But just humor me a couple of minutes more. I still don't see what you're going to accomplish with Pete Jordan. I tell you, he knows that Artie Crane went to see Alexander. That still don't prove anything. Crane could have gone to see Alexander for a million reasons. Well, suppose Pete's willing to swear that he... Yeah? Well, if it isn't the gay troubadour. Hello, Pete, remember me? Now, look, Waring, I'm busy. Yeah, sure I... you are. This won't take much of your time. Did Artie Crane tell you he saw the car that killed Ralph Davis in that accident? Well, uh... Well, didn't he? Yeah. Get your coat, Jordan. We're going downtown. Uh, now, don't rush him, Sergeant. You might break the spell. As long as Pete's in the mood for singing, maybe he'll be willing to croon you something else. I told you everything I know. Not quite. There's one song you forgot. The one that goes, I killed my best friend and am I sorry. What are you talking about? The murder of Artie Crane. You know enough about that to give us a complete chorus. So start singing, pigeon. <laughs> well, girls, that's the whole story. Alexander goes up for manslaughter and Pete Jordan for murder. Any questions? I have one, Mike. Oh, so have I. Uh, I think Marsha was first, Ruth. All right, go on, Marsha. Well, first, I think I owe you an explanation. Yes, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, Alexander made me say I didn't know you. He and Vince caught me phoning you that night. Yes, I figured as much. I was afraid of what he might do, not only to me, but to you. Well... I thought she had a question to ask. Oh, well, all I wanted to know is what made you suspect Pete Jordan. Very simple thing, Angel. As you recall, when the police found Artie, there was nothing on him. So? So the question arises, Ruth, what happened to the hush money Alexander paid him? I don't get it. I pulled one bluff on Alexander that worked. The only reason he admitted giving money to Artie was that he thought I could prove he did. And you couldn't? No, because there was no money found on the body. Oh. And it stood to reason that Alexander and Vince didn't remove it. Otherwise, they would have known I was bluffing. So I figured maybe this was just a plain, everyday murder for money. And once you realized that, it was just a matter of picking out the only party who had the opportunity. That's right. And that gave me Pete Jordan. 
But I'll tell you one thing this business taught me. What? Never take a case where two beautiful women are involved. Makes for complications. <laughs> How so? Well, it's too much of a good thing. You know the old saying, two's company, three's a crowd. He's got a point there, Ruth. He certainly has. Now, 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 no, don't fight. I'm sure we can settle this peaceably. I'm sure we can. That's the spirit. Now, how are we going to work it? That's easy. Mm -hmm. Good, Good night, night, Mr. Mr. Waring. Please turn the cassette over at this point to begin side two.